YouTube, the Buffalo Pile here. Sitting out here in the sunshine this afternoon, it's pretty bright out. Anyway, I'm gonna start off today with a little bit of an apology and a little bit of an explanation. Uh, didn't get a video out last Thursday because I work at a public school. For those of y'all that know me, know that. For those of y'all that don't, well, now you do. And of course, we got a lot to do getting ready for school to start up here in a few weeks. And so, it's been kind of busy at work, and it's going to be continue that way. So, right now, I'm going to cut back to committing to just one video a week on Mondays, and uh, we'll. If we try, if we get an extra one in, we'll squeeze an extra one in every once in a while. And then when it cools off and things calm down a little bit with school starting up, we'll try to pick back up to two. But for right now, we're just going to go down to one. And uh, I'll try to have it up on Mondays. Uh, this one's a little late because I didn't get, get, didn't get one done this weekend. But anyway, first thing we're going to do is do a couple updates. You know, a, a few weeks ago, I... Told you I took my my test to be a ham radio operator. Well, I got my license, so I'm official now. KI5KBG for anybody that wants to try to get a hold of me. The only thing I can hit right now is my local repeater up here on Danville Mountain. If you're a ham and you can hit that radio, you know how to get a hold of me. Just holler at me sometime and I'll uh, try to try to talk to you a little bit. I'm gonna. Putting my call sign down below in the uh, in the comments here, so for those y'all that didn't catch it on here, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, give me a holler. Also, another little quick update. Y'all remember this skillet? Yeah, this is the this is the bad skillet out of our cast iron restoration project. Well, I put it back in the vinegar bath for a couple of more days and. It came out pretty good. The inside really came out good and the handles and everything. But the bottom still got a pretty bad pitting and texturing right here. So it's gonna have to be a camp stove. It'll it'll cook on a camp on a camp oven or on a campfire, but I don't think uh, as rough as it is, I don't know how it would do on a on a regular kitchen stove. So we're gonna put this in the camp gear, but like I said, came up pretty good. We seasoned it up and Wanted to give you a little update on how that ended up coming out. Last week, my buddy NWA Prepper showed you his water bottle that I had done the, the paracord wrap on. And so this week, I'm going to go ahead and show you that wrap. We're going to take this bottle right here. And I've got some cord in there. It's kind of some funky colored cord, but it kind of goes along with the color of this bottle. And I'm going to show you how to do that wrap. Now, I'll tell you to start with. I don't claim to have invented any of the wraps or the or the weaves that I use with paracord because there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of cool stuff with paracord. And I get a lot of my ideas off there. But now, I will tell you that I did come up with this at a camp. Uh, the wrap around the strap was something that I'd seen a lot of people do. And the wrap around the neck with the carabiner hook is something I'd seen people do. But actually combining the two... I had never seen that done before until I did it, but and I haven't seen it since. But I, again, I'm not going to say it's that's my thing. But uh, anyway, we're going to go in and uh, going to show you how that works. Going to show you how to wrap it around here, take it around the neck, make it good and stout, and then put you a carabiner on it so that you can carry it on your belt or on your pack or wherever you might need to. So, thank you for joining me here today. And uh, we're going to go do our paracord wrap, and then we'll be back out here on the porch for a wrap-up. Okay, guys. Now we're in here at the paracord table. I got my water bottle. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the strap around here. I've got this funky cord. I've got about nine and a half feet of this cord. I think that's going to be enough to do it. I would have started with about ten, but this particular piece was nine and a half feet long, so... And it goes pretty well with the color of my of my uh, water bottle, so I'm going to uh, utilize it, and we'll see how well it does. Also, for this job, our tools we need are the uh, scissors. Of course, we've got our forceps, our bent 
uh, forceps that we use if we need to to pull the stuff through. And of course we've got our torch lighter. And we'll set all these tools off to the side. Also for this, you're gonna need a carabiner. And this is just a little old cheap old carabiner like you would get at Walmart. Um, nothing special about it or anything else. Uh, it's not a load bearing carabiner. It's not a climbing carabiner or anything like that. If you wanna get fancy and use one of those, that's up to you. But uh, for this job, we're just using a little old Walmart carabiner. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, yeah, and of course there's a buffalo on my uh, water bottle. <laughs> I wonder, wonder why I've got buffaloes on my water bottles. Yeah. Um, anyway, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our ends together and pull our cord out so that we've got it divided in about half because Again, we're doing everything symmetrically here, so we want it to be about half. And we're gonna start the knot right here at the end of the cap. And to start it, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave the cap tight, uh, tightened down. And we're gonna start this just like we would anything else. We're gonna run this under, run the center point right under there. And then we've got our two sides out here, just like we would on our, regu on our other paracord activities. Except this time, instead of the cord being our centerpiece, we're gonna use this strap as our centerpiece. So we're gonna go over two, which are these two, and then over one, or under one, under the other side. Then the other side's gonna come up, under everything, and out the loop. And that's going to give us our first turn there. And we're going to want to keep it up tight against that. And again, consistently. Always be sure you're pulling it the way you want to. So then we're going to come over. Or no. Sorry. We go over. That's right. Over and under. I'm sorry. Okay. See, I told you when you're doing this cobra knot, the hardest part is getting started. So you got to remember where you're at. So this one's actually coming out the side and this one's coming out the bottom. So we got to remember that. So we're going to go over, under, and then we're going to bring the end of this one under everything and back out. And then we're gonna look. We got two coming in here, which is the knot we're looking for. This one only has one, but that's the starter knot. And it looks a little different on this because we don't have the cord that we're tying to, so you don't see the cord base in there. But you want these two in, and then you're gonna just keep going with that. You're gonna go over, over, under, under everything and back out through the loop. And now then, when you look at this, you can really see that we're starting to get our, our cobra weave going. <clears throat> so it's over, under, and then under everything, pull it out. And like I said, once you get this going, it works it's just a, a feel thing once you get it once you get it started hardest parts getting started but once you get it started it just rolls on through so I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, run these run this on down the strap and then when we get down here to the bottom of the strap we're gonna kind of see where that goes but now that I got it started to make things a little easier on me I am gonna take this off and lay it down that way it gets down here where I can see it as well uh, like I said, it's better to start it up. And if I were out somewhere else, I'd be, I'd probably have the bottle down between my knees so I could be on top of it to see, to be sure I was getting my start going good. But this way I can lay it down now. I can go ahead and do this all the way down. 
And like I said, you want to keep it tight and you want to keep it pushed up and consistent so that your knot looks good. Oh, and you want to stop and look every once in a while because see, I got one of my knots backwards. You can't really see it with this multicolored knot here, but I got one backwards. So anyway, I'm going to pause the movie here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this down so I can get it where I can see it better and work with it better. And then uh, I'll get back to you when I get down here. If you need to see how to do the Cobra knot, again, we're just doing it over a plastic piece here instead of the cord. But I did a detailed cord, a detailed paracord bracelet uh, with, the, with the Cobra knot and you can go back and take a look at that. Anyway, I'm going to fix this and then I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back. I've got down to my last knot here. and This is why you want to unhook the lid for sure at this point because you're going to have to get down here close to make these last couple of uh, turns. And you got to work at this a little bit to get it all through here. But you want this to be fairly tight against the edge of the water bottle here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one more knot in here to get it right down on the edge of the ring. It keeps this cord good and tight, adds a little strength to it, and it also makes it tight for your your for the rest of the activity here. And so there we go. So now we're down to the water bottle. Now I'm going to run my cords under this ring. Um, that way, if I do have to, if I do break this or something at some point, it won't be as hard to get off if I've got it over and under the ring. Plus, it, it holds the cords better underneath that ring because that ring's a little bigger than the ring around the bottle. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two cords and I'm going to run them opposite around. So it's like a double wrap. Now, let me come back up here, okay? It's gonna go around, this one's gonna go all the way around to the back and this one's gonna come in on the other side and it's gonna go in and around this way. That's like a double wrap in there. And then when we get back here to the back, actually what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna cross over and come up on this side and up on this side of that to help pull all of that together and to tighten it up here as we get ready to do our carabiner attachment. So, so to review, you're gonna wrap one cord all the way around and it's actually gonna come all the way around and back through the, the edge there where it went down. And that's gonna create you a good pivot point there. But it's also gonna be a good anchor for your stretch on out here that's gonna go out to your carabiner. <clears throat> so now to do the carabiner part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our carabiner and we're gonna set it out here a ways. And we're gonna run our paracord through our carabiner. <clears throat> and now this is kinda of up to you, and this can depend on how much cord you put into it. <clears throat> how many turns do you want, or how long do you want this carabiner holder to be? Most people don't want their bottle to flop too much, whether it's on a backpack or whether it's on a, um, on their belt or whatever. So I try to set it where I'm gonna get four or five Cobra knots in there. That's far enough out that I can hook it on just about anything, but it's also not so far out that the carabiner becomes a problem whenever I'm using it out in the, out in the wilderness or out at the camp or wherever I'm at. <clears throat> so now I've got my, I've got my cord here and I've got it just looped around, which is exactly the same thing we do at the end, other end of the buckle. The first end of the buckle we use the lark's head knot on. You remember we fed it back through the, the loop and pulled it in? 
Well, this is just like, for this one, this is just like the other end of the buckle where we just loop it through and then we start tying. So we're gonna go over two and under one and then back under everything. And come back out the top. And we're gonna make that that knot set in there and this is the time when you get your carabiner set where you want it to it's just like with your buckle you know this is the time when you measure again when you get that first knot in there you measure again to be sure that you've got the length right and all that stuff I'll set it up here so you can kind of see and um, so that gets you make sure you get your knot right so that you get your length right on your cord and everything. This is where you adjust the, the length of your carabiner. And if you look at this here, it's kind of hard the way I've got this video set up, but anyway, you can see where that's gonna hook on my belt loop and my water bottle is gonna be down, top of my water bottle is gonna be about the top of my pocket, which is a good place to carry your water bottle. It's not gonna flop around too much. It's not gonna hang too low and flop around too much and be in the way of your leg. But it's gonna hang down far enough to where it doesn't impede your belt or anything else going on at your waist. So now, now we gotta get in here, and this is where it can get tight sometimes because you're now gonna work back towards this knot. And as you do, the way we did these on either side out here, you pull this tighter and tighter as you tighten this knot up, the more turns you get in here the tighter this knot gets and actually tightens the hold of this paracord around the neck which helps secure your bottle and again we're going to have one piece of paracord we are going to end up using about eight to nine feet to do this like I said you could make this a little longer add a little more paracord in uh, you could even go back and double this and add some more paracord in uh, just you know, so I know some people are paracord people. They want to carry a lot of paracord with them. Um, you know, make it work for what you want it to work for when you're doing yours. Okay. So now we get that first full knot in, and now we're ready to get our pattern going again. And again, you're going to have to deal with. with this. I put that lid back on to kind of give you a little better view, but we're going to take it off now so we can get that hump out of our way and finish finish this on down. And I do apologize. I didn't realize this color was going to be so hard to see. Um, it looks cool, but it's kind of hard to see on the uh, with the bottle color and everything else. It's kind of hard to see the knots and how this is exactly coming out. <clears throat> but again, you want this to be fairly tight. Now, <clears throat> I will tell you, these little cheap carabiners will break sometimes. The spring will break out of them or something. <clears throat> you can take um, just a nail, or if you've got a marlin spike or something like that, you can take and stick in beside this right here and take the broken uh, par carabiner off, open it up and roll it out of that hole. Just have something that you can stick in there and, and something as simple as a nail would work. <clears throat> Just something to keep that knot from pulling out. And then you can open another carabiner, work it in there and put it back in the hook. So just because your carabiner breaks doesn't mean you've got to go back and redo all this. You can actually fix that. But I want this to be fairly tight. Yeah, and see that's pretty good right there. I want it to pull up. I want it to be, I want it to have tightened that connection up and tightened this rope, this cord around the neck up so that it's good and taut. <clears throat> okay. But I might could get one more in there, but if you did, you make it, you get it hard to singe your ends without 
um, messing up your uh, your stuff. Now, I am going to go ahead and do the hide on my my singe like I like I've been doing, I, and I'm doing that more for practice than anything else. That's a new skill I've learned, and uh, so I just want to keep doing that because I like it and. Uh, it's something that I want to be familiar with and that I want to do in the future, so. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut both of those off. And here's how much I had left. That's gonna be uh, about six to eight inches on each one, so that's gonna be uh, foot, foot and a half, so you know, eight feet, but you don't want to be exactly eight feet because that's going to be very tough in there to to do those last few knots. And we're going to melt them and tap them in. Lock it in. Put the lid on it and you can see that you've got you've strengthened this up and and really uh, it's hard without me having it where you can feel it but when you feel this you realize that that has strengthened that up a lot over just the plastic piece of plastic that was there originally um, how much strength that gives it and durability it's not gonna cut as easy it's not gonna snag on stuff as easy the cloth is more forgiving uh, as you as it bumps into things um, plus you got the convenience of a good little deal and no matter how heavy this is this is not pulling on the strap it's not pulling on any part of the lid it's pulling on the neck of the bottle it's pulling on the neck of the bottle all the way around the bottle so it's good and tight and uh, and it's going to provide you a good secure anchor point whether it be to a backpack or a uh, or your belt loop or uh, uh, you know maybe a car seat maybe you got a spot in your car that you can hang it some people have hangers on their car seat that they might hang that on anyway I'll lay that there so you can take a look at it and uh, we'll be back out on the porch for a wrap up here in just a few minutes well, the sun went down behind the house there far enough now that I get to sit in the shade, but we're back. Got my water bottle here with my new wrap on it. I'm going to protect that plastic piece and got a good place to buckle it on my belt now whenever I get ready to go somewhere. So anyway, thank y'all for joining me today. And, uh, you know, I do appreciate you joining me and I do appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, Again, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell so you get a notification whenever I do whenever I do a new video. Uh, like I said, I'm going to start just doing them on Mondays. And uh, then if I can get another one in during the week, I'll do it. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you all on Monday. And thanks for joining me here on the porch.